your how-to guide to health with the Renewal Institute. It's a big a hot, one. hot debate always, especially for me. I used to sleep so well. And then I had a child and then that's just gone out the window. And last week we were chatting to Dr. Maureen, who's the founder of the Renewal Institute, about the importance of sleep. So we thought we got so many questions in about it that we really need to deal with this in a whole session just about sleep. Yeah. So we've got Dr. Moritz um, from the Renewal Institute in studio. How are you? I'm well, thanks. And you, Saskia? Good, good, good. So mm-hmm. how to create the most optimal sleep routine. So... Is sleep really important? Absolutely. (laughs) We talk about sleep as the foundation of health because there are so many important physiological processes that happen during sleep, especially during our deep sleep cycles. Uh, If you don't get enough deep sleep, your health will slowly deteriorate. But it's also not only about your health. It's about quality of life. There's no quality of life if you have to drag yourself through every day at feeling absolutely exhausted. Mm, that's it, your quality of life. And yeah. just try and, if you wake up in the morning, look, it, every morning is a little bit different, but if you really struggle to get up every morning, could that be a problem with your sleep? Or maybe you just dislike your job a lot? Would, would it just always be asleep? <laughs> I remember I had a sleep. job ages ago that I hated, and yeah. I used to wake up like... No, wanting to cry. Definitely. Stress, stress can also cause that type of fatigue in the morning, but it is often a issue with deep sleep. Not getting sufficient deep sleep, even though you've slept long enough, not getting long, long enough hours of deep sleep. Um, but stress also plays a role there. So if you're very unhappy in a situation or a job, something like that, that long-term stress can certainly bring on that Give type that of as fatigue. Well. Yeah. What, what, what about this idea that we'll sleep when we're dead? <laughs> That's a young man's game. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, well, you might be able to get away with that quite a bit when you're young. Um, it will certainly catch up to you at some stage. And like I mentioned, there's significant implications for your health and for the quality of life. What about this idea, so you go out on a big party and you miss a whole sleep, a whole night, or your child's really sick and you miss a whole, a whole night of sleep. Can you it's sort of catch up on that sleep? Is that sort of a fallacy? Yes, no, you can. Um, there's definitely value to naps. Uh, catching up sleep is definitely possible. It's not ideal, obviously, but it can be done. But uh, there's also certain criteria for naps. And the two short naps, waking up in the middle of a deep sleep cycle is actually going to make you feel more tired. Mm. And, I know uh, those with afternoon point. naps. That's yeah. What is the, for an afternoon nap, what is the best sort of timing? Ideally about an hour and a half, 90 okay. minutes. So would that be sort of a full sleep cycle? Yes. You know, we wake okay. up wondering what year it is, <laughs> yeah. where you are. That's it. Sometimes it's way too long and you're like, what's Absolutely. happening? If it's too short or too long, you're going to feel groggy when you wake up. Okay. So an hour and a half is sort of ideal. Yeah. Um, and how much sleep would you say, Dr. Marit, we need every night in order to function optimally? On average, we need ideally seven to eight hours of sleep. But like I mentioned, it's not the amount of sleep that is paramount. It is also the quality of sleep. You could be sleeping eight to nine hours every night and still wake up completely fatigued and exhausted in the morning because you're not getting quality sleep. You're not cycling through your deep stages of sleep Mm -hmm. like you should be. And there's quite a few factors that can uh, have an impact on that. And uh, it's sometimes not so easy to figure them all out, but that's why we're here. Sure. Okay, Anton's saying I'm much more exhausted when I sleep eight hours rather than five. What, th- does that make sense? Um, the only way that that makes sense to me is that he is having sleep deficit and when he's actually sleeping eight hours, his body's starting to catch up and his body's telling him he has not slept enough yet. Okay. So there's no specific physiological reason why you would feel better from five hours compared to eight. Compared to eight. Yeah. Um, t- I remember Margaret Thatcher always always saying that she would have four to five hours and feel fantastic. Is that possible for some people? It Are people possible. sort of different? It is possible. You can condition yourself to, to get away with less sleep like that but it will eventually catch up, catch up. With you. okay it is, it, is it true that as you get older you need less sleep uh, that's one that's yes. one i've heard quite a bit <laughs> it does happen it's not that you need less sleep it's but that you do sleep less now things like your melatonin levels naturally start declining so you are naturally going to start having less deep sleep and okay. it's not it's not a good thing necessarily but it is it's true <laughs> your how to guide to health with the renewal institute how to Create the most optimal sleep routine. We've got Dr. Moritz from the Renewal Institute in studio. Um, chatting, chatting about sleep. This is a big issue for, I think, for every adult living in Johannesburg. In well, the world. If, I literally, so mummy's a good example of somebody that really sleeps well. And I always think, 
Oh, one Damn day. You. One day, one day. Regan says, um, are certain sleeping positions more beneficial for good rest? Health-wise, yes. If we look at sleep breathing disorders like obstructive sleep apnea, you're much more prone to have breathing disorders if you sleep on your back. So it's not ideal. Okay. Sleeping on your side is the better position. And for certain physiological reasons, sleeping on your left side is most ideal. Okay, so sleeping on your, that's interesting. Mm. Sleeping on your, rest, on your left side, most ideal. Improves your circulation. Aha, uh-huh. and then somebody's saying, can a lady's menstrual cycle cause insomnia? It's not the most common thing that we encounter, but it certainly is possible. It so is possible, if, it, yeah. if it's happening the same time every month, then obviously it is playing a role. So that hmm. hormone So would that be a hormone? Hmm. It be a hormonal issue. Okay, so let's get into the different phases of sleep. So we said that you ultimately want sort of eight hours of sleep at night, but if you're not getting your, your deep sleep cycles, you're yeah. not going to feel refreshed. That's right. So let's get into the sleep cycles just so that we can understand sort of how it works. Well, there's four stages of sleep, and we cycle through them repeatedly several times during the night. Um, your... Stage one sleep is very superficial. It's when you close your eyes and you're busy drifting off to sleep. So it's very, very superficial and you can very easily wake up from it. Uh, We spend about 5% of our total sleep time in stage one. Okay, Uh, so it's very quite short. Yeah, and we identify the sleep stages by the different brain waves. So during your stage one sleep, it's mostly alpha and theta waves. Mm. Uh, Stage two sleep is also fairly superficial, but you are now asleep. Um, the body is preparing itself for deep sleep and there's certain changes that take place like your heart rate slows, your body temperature drops slightly and we spend quite a lot of time in stage 2 we spend almost 50% of our total sleep time here Hmm. and the predominant waves there are theta waves stage 3 sleep or slow wave sleep is one of the most important parts of deep sleep we spend 20-25% to of total sleep time here and it is the most restorative part of sleep Hmm. and this is where many of the very important physiological things happen we have growth hormone that's secreted which causes tissue repair and healing there's a lot of detoxification that takes place our hormones are balanced things like our cortisol levels come down insulin calms down so there's a there's a balancing of all these hormones so typically what you find with a lack of stage 3 sleep it's associated with things like higher blood pressure higher levels of inflammation higher glucose and insulin levels Hmm. weight gain hormone imbalances, fatigue, and so much more. It's a really, really crucial part of sleep. And here it's predominantly delta waves that are present in the brain. Okay. Then finally, during our stage four sleep, or what's known as REM sleep, this is where there's a lot of brain activity going on, and this is where we dream. So where stage three sleep is crucial for the body, stage four REM sleep is very, very important for the brain. So new memories are formed, uh, we learn new tasks, memory is consolidated. So you can actually compare it to something like defragging a computer. It's very, very important for your brain to put all that little bits of information back into the right place. And maybe get rid of the stuff that's sort of not unimportant. Yes, it actually does happen. Is that why sometimes when you wake up, when your alarm goes off and you're in the middle of a dream because you're sort of coming out of that... Mm. If you're, if you're woken during REM sleep, you often remember the dreams, but you are also a bit disorientated and groggy. Yes, definitely, yeah. Definitely, huh. definitely, yeah. Okay, so what would some of the reasons be that people are not getting into the stage three and the stage four? Is that well, sort of a pro- obviously one of the main problems that you're not getting your, your deep sleep? There's lots of reasons for it. There's a lot of things that could interfere with your deep sleep. Anything from... Uh, alcohol use before bed, a lot of medications, and ironically, a lot of the medications people use for sleep. So things like <laughs> sedatives and tranquilizers, big you're culprits. N- okay, so then you're culprits. not going into a deep sleep. Not at all. Uh-huh. Even sleeping pills. A lot of the sleeping pills people use, and even antihistamines. A lot of people take an antihistamine because it makes them drowsy, makes them fall asleep. But what they don't know is that it's destroying their deep sleep. So this is a really, really big That's problem. Fascinating. But then also one of the other big things that we find is like all the, the sleep disordered breathing problems like obstructive sleep apnea, upper airways resistance syndrome, and then things like restless legs, which can have numerous causes as well, are all responsible for disrupting deep sleep. So there's a lot of reasons. Sure. And if you did, if you did um, one of these sleep studies at the Renewal Institute, would you be able to see yes. if you're going into a deep sleep? Absolutely. Um, part of the full polysomnogram is a full EEG, mm-hmm. which is the only real effective way to determine what stage of sleep you're in by measuring the brainwave activity during the stage okay. of sleep. So it gives you a report that tells you exactly how much time you spent in each uh, sleep stage. Okay, and then you can see, and then obviously going forward, what you can do. Absolutely. It's a very valuable thing sleep. for us to know, to know if you're getting stage three sleep. And we see it often, and you can correlate it with medications. You see a patient's report, all sleep stages normal except for stage three, and you know it's medication related. Look at their list of meds, and you know. 
That's fascinating. So it's, yeah, it's very, very interesting. Okay, so look, if, if you really do struggle with your sleep, then definitely a sleep study would be beneficial. But Absolutely. there's also some tips that you can give us on sort of, you call it sleep hygiene. Yes to do this at home sort of yes. naturally on your own. So yes. what would some of those tips be? Well, it is definitely something that a lot of people are becoming much more aware of. And we've had this discussion a few times before as well. And it is something that I cannot stress how important it is. It sounds so basic and sounds so simple, but when it's put into practice, it's got massive, massive benefits for sleep. Mm. So sleep hygiene is simply just healthy habits around sleep. And um, one of the first places to start is to maybe have a look at all your medications, see what you're taking, see if any of that is having an impact on your sleep, avoiding alcohol before bed. And uh, then having a regular bedtime is crucial. Our body loves routine. We like working in these rhythms and routines. So if you go to bed at the same time every night, your body's already going to start shutting down before. And it's going to know okay. it's time to go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Having a regular bedtime routine also helps. And this is the one thing we've spoken about a lot is the screens. It's the computer screens. It's the television screens. So falling asleep iPads, in front of the TV is not ideal. Absolutely. All of these screens emit the frequency of light and disrupts our melatonin production. And it prevents deep sleep. It really does have a dramatic impact on mm. deep sleep. So the suggestion is to take that last hour before bedtime, create a routine, something that you enjoy doing, something that relaxes you. So it's different for everybody. It could be reading a book, a paper book, not a Kindle, <laughs> uh, having a bath, listening to music, or whatever it is to relax you just for that last hour. So that is really, really important. But then also your environment where you're sleeping is crucial. It's very important that it's completely dark. The smallest amount of light can interfere with your melatonin production. The smallest amount of noise can bring you out of your deep sleep. Mm -hmm. Uh, It needs to be cool. A cool ventilated room also um, promotes healthy deep sleep. And then, of course, there's all the supplements that we use, all the nutraceuticals. Uh, There's several of them that can actually also promote deep sleep. Something like theanine is well known for promoting slow wave sleep, stage three. Okay. And something like melatonin could significantly increase your, your REM phase of sleep. Okay, interesting. Fascinating stuff. Dr. Moritz from the Renewal Institute teaching us how to create the most optimal sleep routine. Um, get hold of the Renewal Institute if you think that you would like to have one of these sleep studies. And then you start, sort of start from there, know what your sleep cycle is. Absolutely. But basically, if you're feeling quite exhausted, if your stress levels are very high, all of these things, a lot of things can be traced back to your sleep, right? Absolutely, absolutely. But it needs to be assessed first. So the, 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 the correct process would be to see one of the functional medicine doctors first, get a proper diagnosis, okay. see what the problem is and what's and the cause, the treat the cause, and then if it's necessary to do a sleep study, do it. We do get a lot of outside people referring themselves in for sleep studies, and uh, seeing a lot of those patients most people who suspect that they have a significant problem, we do find that they, they do have, have a, problem, a problem. So you probably yeah, will know. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Dr. Marat from the Renewal Institute, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Saskia. Your how-to guide to health with the Renewal Institute.